So today I'll be talking about a method for targeting neutrophils for T-cell mediated anti-tumor immunotherapy. So T-cells are critical for anti-tumor immunity and CD8 T-cell exclusion from the tumor correlates with poor long-term prognosis in a number of human cancers. Current FDA-approved immunotherapies have limited efficacy. These immunotherapies are T-cell-focused. These immune checkpoint inhibitors, however, they're reinvigorating T-cells that are already pre-existing within the tumor, and they work in a minority of patients in a subset of cancer types. Chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy or CAR T-cell therapy only targets surface antigens, surface tumor antigens, and are approved only for blood cancers and are largely ineffective for solid tumors. The limited efficacy of these two immuno approved immunotherapies for solid tumors is potentially due to the immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment that hinders T cell infiltration. Now the B16 melanoma model in mice mimics a cold human tumor where less than 44% of the total leukocyte infiltrate are affected T cells. And this model is largely resistant to immune checkpoint inhibitors and is the model that we use for our studies. So tumor antigen presentation is required to induce the range of T cell functions essential for effective and durable anti-tumor immunity. Antigen presenting cells, or APCs, pick up the tumor antigen at the site of the tumor. They then migrate to the draining lymph node, where they then activate naive tumor antigen-specific T cells. This activation initiates the proliferation of those T cells and the acquisition of effective functions, such as the generation of cytokines that are important for stimulating other immune cells, and the generation of cytotoxic proteins, such as granzyme B or perforin, which is important for actually directly killing the tumors. These two, uh, the clonally expanded uh, armed T cells, then have to traffic to the tumor. And this process is also dependent on ant antigen presenting cells. These antigen presenting cells, or APCs, generate chemoattractants, which help in the T cell infiltration. The T cells then, uh, such as CD8 T cells, then kill tumors, and that leads to the release of additional antigens, which can be taken up by the intratumoral antigen presenting cells to now activate additional T cell clones and leading to really the broadening of the immune response. T cell interaction with APCs is also important for the generation of memory T cells. Memory T cells get rapidly activated, much more so than naive T cells, and that's important in the case of when, if the tumor reoccurs and therefore are required for durable anti-tumor immunity. Now these T cell focused immune checkpoint inhibitors and CAR T therapy circumvent what is known to be this deficit in antigen presentation in tumors. And that deficit really is due to the fact that classical antigen presenting cells, which are your dendritic cells, they are limited in abundance, are they reduced further with age, they become dysfunctional in the immunosuppressive microenvironment, both in the developing tumor as well as the tumor draining lymph nodes. They need adjuvants, danger signals, to convert them from a naturally tolerogenic state that usually suppresses T cells to an immunogenic state. And this all leads to a lack of robust and durable anti-tumor specific T cell responses. Our concept is to harness neutrophil derived antigen presenting cells referred to as NAPCs that naturally occur in disease states, including cancer, and are derived from abundant, we make about 100 billion neutrophils per day, readily accessible neutrophils for anti-tumor immunity. How do we achieve this? We are targeting neutrophil CD16B, this is an FC gamma receptor, that is expressed almost exclusively on human neutrophils. We target that receptor with an antibody that is conjugated to a tumor-associated or a tumor neoantigen. This antigen-antibody conjugate, AAC, is internalized via the CD16B, therefore delivering the tumor antigen into the cell, as well as 
signals that then change that neutrophil, convert that neutrophil into an antigen-presenting cell that robustly activates both cytotoxic CD8 T cells as well as helper CD4 T cells that are critical for cancer immunity. When we treat a humanized FC gamma receptor mouse with AAC that engages that human CD16B, we find that it increases T cells and natural killer NK cell infiltration. On the left hand side, you see a control B16 F10 melanoma. The cells are in blue, and you don't see much infiltrates of CD8 T cells in green or CD4 T cells in red. However, on the right hand side, with AAC treatment, you get robust uh, infiltration of both CD8s and CD4s deep into the tumor parenchyma. When we look at total leukocyte infiltrate, you can see that is increased significantly with AAC treatment. Within those leukocytes, you look at the subsets that are there of T cells, you see a nice increase in CD8s. That is representative of the clonal expansion of CD8s, which I have not shown you, but the clonal expansion and infiltration of these T cells into the tumor after AAC treatment. CD4s are also increased. We also get a very nice increase in natural killer cells. NK cells will directly kill tumors, particularly those that are uh, deficient in MHC1, down-regulate MHC class 1, and therefore are invisible to CD8 T cell attack. So in, we, with AAC treatment, we have now turned a cold tumor heart, which is really a major hurdle in immunotherapy. AAC treatment alone reduces tumor growth. You can see in the green bar, we have a number of animals here shown in the white numbers, and therefore everybody is normalized to their own control group for that experiment. So we see a reduction in tumor growth in the B16F10 model. Anti-PD-1 alone has very mild effect, as shown by many others in this model. However, together with AAC, we get a significant reduction in tumor growth. The synergistic effect is due to AAC now bringing in the, uh, uh, allowing T cell expansion and bringing those T cells into the tumor that now the breaks get taken off by the anti-PD-1 to get this very significant effect. Here's a, just a representative image of one experiment in which we look at the trajectory of tumor, volume, uh, of tumor volume across several animals. You can see very good growth in the control animals and a blunting of all of the tumors in the, uh, in the mice that I've shown here with AAC and anti-PD-1 treatment. So what does the immune landscape look like within the tumor? On the left-hand side, you can see again antigen-specific, and this tumor antigen-specific CD8 T cells is increased in the AAC alone, as I've shown you in the previous slides. But when you put AAC and anti-PD-1 together, that significantly increases, so it increases further. If we look within those T cells, those T cells have effector functions, such as cytokine production and cyto uh, cytotoxic proteins and cytokine production. As shown on the right-hand side, AAC alone increases that, but that is, again, significantly increased because you're really making this sort of feed-forward cycle of anti-tumor immunity when you put the two together. Memory T cells are also increased. T stem cell-like um, uh, central memory cells as well as T resident memory cells, both of these have been associated with very good anti-tumor immunity in human cancers as well as preclinical mouse models. So AAC-induced neutrophil-derived antigen-presenting cells elicit the range of T cells functions that are required for effective and durable anti-tumor immunity. I've shown you evidence for uh, well, we have, I didn't show you the actual data, but we have evidence for T cell clonal proliferation. But that is already um, uh, the fact that we see that very large increase in T cells within the tumor and microenvironment. That's because of these clonally expanded T cells. We show that these T cells have effector functions and that they're importantly trafficking to the tumor. We also have evidence for what I said, talked about as epitope spreading, which I'm happy to talk to you 
offline. We also show that these NAPCs can give you production of memory T cells, which is critical for durable anti-tumor immunity. So the advantages of our AAC therapy is that it overcomes antigen presentation deficit in tumors to elicit the full range of T cell functions. It's a platform technology where anti-CD16B is added to tumor-specific antigens, and the, the antigen you pick is depending on what uh, uh, tumor types you want to target, which is on the right. It's not dependent on single and or surface antigen or adjuvant, and it's a biologic that can be delivered IV. It induces intratumor leukocyte infiltration, which makes a cold tumor hot, and which presents an opportunity to combine it with various immunotherapies. NAPC is differentiated in several key ways. Uh, we get antigen specificity, solid tumor efficacy, liquid tumor efficacy. Haven't shown you that data. Again, happy to talk offline. It addresses, very importantly, antigen loss or drift, which the other modalities do not. There's no ex vivo cell expansion required. It's platform-based, and there's ease of dosing. So summary and next steps for commercial translation. We've demonstrated proof of concept for AAC, a first-in-class therapeutic platform, harnessing neutrophils for immunotherapy, uh, using a very cool melanoma mouse model and showing the efficacy of combination therapy. Anticipated IP is method of use in combination therapy, which is filed and pending. In progress, we have secured MGB Ventures Amplify funding for optimizing antibody-based platform for valency and specificity. We are getting CROs to, uh, to validate and to repeat our data. Operational team support is, is Ron Cobb with an advisory board. Anticipated IP of these activities is to get composition of matter, and we are currently initiating financing discussions. Thank you. <laughs>